Now that we know how to sketch the graph of a product or sum of two sinusoids with unequal periods, let's see if we can come up with the equation given the graph. So here's a good example. Here we have this graph that bounces up and down around the x-axis. We know that products have varying amplitudes. And we know that sums have varying sinusoidal axis. So in this case, it's pretty clear that we have a varying amplitude for our graph. So we're going to be working with a product. Now we just have to figure out specifically which equations we're going to be working with. All right. So the way we start is by drawing what we call the envelope curve, or the curve that bounds our behavior. So I'll start here at the origin and graph a boundary curve around my given information. And then I try to come up with an equation for that boundary curve, because that will be one of my functions. Here, I can see that since I started at the origin and returned to the x-axis after 360 degrees, my graph is a sine graph. So I know that I'm going to be starting with one of my functions being the sine of theta. The amplitude on this, we can see, my graph is a little bit off, but we can see that the amplitude is 5. So there's half my equation. Now I just have to figure out second equation. Here we have two pieces of information that we want to focus on. First, we need to figure out how, what the dilation factor is for my second function. How many cycles have we squeezed into this 360 degrees? And second, we need to determine whether or not that second function is a sine or a cosine. So first, let's look at the cycles. A cycle would be from a maximum to a maximum or a minimum to a minimum um, where the graph lies tangent to my boundary curve. So here would be one cycle, here would be another, here would be a third, and a fourth, and a fifth. Now notice that here at the middle, the graph is not tangent to the curve, but crosses through it. So the next cycle goes to here, then another cycle, and another cycle, and another, and another, and another. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So we have eleven cycles. We've dilated by a factor of one eleventh. <laughs> Now, to determine whether we're using sine or cosine for a product, we focus on the middle of our image. So we're going to take a look right down the middle here, and we're going to look to see whether the graph is symmetrical around this midline. Since on one side I'm above the x-axis, and on the other side I'm below the x-axis. This graph is not symmetrical around the midline. So what that tells me is that my functions are not symmetrical either. And what I mean by that is one will be a sine and one will be a cosine. 
since we've already determined that our envelope curve is a sine function, that means that our second function needs to be a cosine with a dilation factor of 1 11th. So my second function is going to be cosine of 11 theta. We don't need any amplitude here because we've taken into account the amplitude on our first function. So our final equation then is y equals 5 sine theta times cosine 11 theta.